Bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Alexo Ray and welcome to another video. I'm so glad you're here. I feel like I'm gonna have to do my intros in French from now on just because it's so much fun and it's so different for me to like do that. I don't know. I low-key love it. Anyways, welcome to another video. You guys already know what we are doing today. It is my favorite video to film. We are going to be tackling my May wrap-up today. I am very excited. We had a very, very good reading month. I read a total of 11 books. That's pretty good for me. If I read 10 or more books a month, that's a huge accomplishment for me because typically I read around 6 to 7 books a month. The fact that I've been going over 10 books the last few months has been, it's been a big deal for me. Very happy about it very excited about it I read some incredible books this month I'm talking some of my favorite books I have read this year so far we wrapped up a few book series we also made an indent in others so I am very excited for today's video we have a lot of fun books to talk about so without further ado let's jump into it before we jump in to my May wrap up, I just want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Lingoda. If you're not familiar with Lingoda, they're an online language learning school where you can take classes in French, Spanish, German, English, as well as business English. I think I've talked about it a few times on my channel before, but if you didn't know this about me, a little fun fact, I actually took five years of French in high school and college. I absolutely loved it. I love the language. I love the culture. You guys have also seen me do so many reading vlogs in the past on romances that take place in France, such as Anna and the French Kiss. That's one of my favorite books of all time. I don't think I'll ever stop talking about it, especially because it's the book that really got me back into reading. So anyways, I decided to take a few classes in French with Langota to revisit the language, kind of brush up on my skills, revisit the culture, and it has honestly been so much fun. I've always loved learning so very much and it's such an exciting part of my day when I get to sit down and join my Lingoda class. I love that the classes are offered online so you can learn absolutely anywhere and Lingoda also offers classes 24-7 so there's always a class I can find to fit my crazy schedule. Lingoda also offers this really cool course called the Language Sprint and it helps you make progress very quickly by taking classes every day for two months straight. I think this is a really cool way to challenge yourself but also really dive into the language and the really cool part about Lingoda is that if you attend every single class, they will give you all your money back. They will literally refund you 100% of their course fee. 50,000 people have participated in previous Lingoda sprints and absolutely love it because it shows results in a short period of time. You can use my link down below to learn more about Lingoda. You can also use my code Alexa Sprint to get 20 euros off or $25 off your sprint registration. But thank you so much to Lingoda for sponsoring today's video and without further ado, let's hop in to my May wrap up. Okay guys, we are gonna hop right into it. I'm so excited because I read some incredible books in the month of May. I think I only had like one or two three-star reads, which is not a bad rating for me at all, but it's definitely on the lower side. I say this all the time on my channel, but I rarely read a book I don't like. My ratings are usually like four or five stars. Nonetheless, we had an incredible reading month and we're gonna hop right into it with the very first book I read in the month of May, which was Ignite Me by Tara Moffey. This is book three in the Shatter Me series. If you're not familiar with the Shatter Me series, it revolves around a girl named Julia and she lives in a dystopian world that is run by the reestablishment. They're basically like this higher power that is trying to rebuild the world, but they're doing it in a way that is actually destroying the world and a lot of the people live in poverty. A lot of families are separated. And the main character, Juliet, her touch is lethal, so she can't actually touch anyone without hurting them. The first two books in the series revolve around her trying to figure out her powers and figuring out how to control them so she doesn't cause harm to people. There's also a love triangle between Julia, Adam, and Warner. Adam is a soldier for the reestablishment. Warner is in control of Sector 45 of the reestablishment. There's a love triangle between the three of them that we get to watch play out. The entire story is so different from anything I've ever read. I really enjoyed reading the Shatter Me series. I think Tara Moffey's writing style is so different from any other author I've ever read before. 
we're basically reading the story exactly the way Juliet is experiencing it and Tara Moffey writes her point of view in a very poetic type of style. These books are super fast paced. They're romance heavy but they're not. There's a lot of action and adventure in it that kind of levels it out and it just makes it really fun. The storyline flows really nice and overall I've just been loving Juliet's story and then in book three we kind of see everything come together really beautifully. A lot of people say that Ignite Me is like their favorite book in the entire series. I totally understand why because this book was just it was honestly like a masterpiece. Some of my favorite favorite quotes came out of this story. A lot of people say that this is the story that you fall madly in love with Aaron Warner. Totally understand the hype around him now because he really got me in this one. I'm not gonna lie in book one and book two I was a little iffy on him but Ignite Me definitely definitely turned me in to an Aaron Warner girly. Throughout the entire series he is like the ultimate hype man but in this one specifically we really get to see him shine in a new type of light. Throughout the entire story he just never loses faith in Juliet. He's always pushing her to be better, pushing her to do better. When Juliet loses faith in herself and she doesn't think she can do something, Warner is right there next to her saying that you can do this. Like you can do anything you want to do. We definitely see Juliet shine in this as well because she really starts to find herself in this story. She starts to take charge of her life. I don't know. I just feel like this really wraps up everything so beautifully. I wound up rating this five stars and then when I went on to Goodreads to add in my rating, I started looking at other reviews, trying to see what other people thought of this, and a lot of people were saying that this was the perfect end to the series, it wrapped everything up beautifully. With the way a lot of people were talking about the book though, you would think that this was the very last book in the series, which isn't the case. We all know that there's a lot of books that come after Ignite Me, but when I was looking it up, I found that Ignite Me came out, and then it wasn't until a few years later that the other books in the series started to come out, so I almost wonder if this was meant to be the last book in the series, Tara Moffey came back and was like, you know what? No, it's not over. It's not over yet. So this was five stars and following Ignite Me, I immediately jumped in to four more books in the series. I was very content with the ending of this story. Ignite Me ended very beautifully, but after reading these books, I'm so happy the series didn't end with Ignite Me because I feel like it would have been the easy way to end a series. Adding on to the story and going the way that Tara Moffey did with it, absolutely incredible. I really wish we could see a film adaption of this series. So after Ignite Me, I jumped into Restore Me. This picks up immediately after Ignite Me, kind of seeing Julia adapt in her new leadership role. We're seeing her insecurities with it. We're seeing her struggles. I really, really enjoyed this because although Ignite Me wrapped up beautifully, there were still so many unresolved problems in that world. Going into Restore Me, we're kind of seeing those problems, seeing how Julia and Warner and everyone else is kind of adapting to those. It makes this story so good because you think it's done. You think it's over but it's not. It's honestly just beginning. I can't go into too much detail with this because this is already book four in the series so at that point it's like impossible to not give away spoilers. This was absolutely incredible. It was five stars for me. So much happens in this story. Juliet is trying to figure out more about her past and where she comes from. Warner is also dealing with his own struggles. Nonetheless is still there hyping Juliet up, pushing her to be better, pushing her to do better. His character throughout this entire series is just absolutely perfection. This is also a dual point of view between Juliet and Warner which I really liked because again we get to see Warner struggles throughout the story whereas in the first three books in the series it's from Juliet's point of view so we're only seeing what Juliet is struggling with and Warner comes across as like this perfect character who just always knows what to do always knows what to say but in this story because we get the dual point of view we're seeing that Warner also struggles with things immediately after that I jumped in to the novellas we have Shadow Me and Reveal Me these are both from Kenji's point of view and I have to say this is when I start to fall in love with Kenji and I see the hype around him. After reading the novellas I was blown away by Kenji's character and usually with novellas because they're very short there's not a lot to them and I love these. I rated both of them four stars because I just thought they were so good. They were so powerful. We really get to see Kenji's character kind of shine in them. Kenji is another amazing character in the Shatter Me series. He's an incredible friend. He's an incredible hero. Similar to Warner's point of view in Restore Me, we get to see Kenji's point of view. So we get to see his struggles, his insecurities. It just makes Warner and Kenji seem more real to me. This was absolutely incredible. Four stars. I love Kenji's character. And then after that, I jumped in to Defy Me. This is book five in the series. And in this one, we actually get a point of view from Juliet, Warner, and Kenji, which I thought was so cool. Like I loved having all three point of views in this because there was so much more added to it because
because you're getting three point of views of it. Again, I can't say too much about it without giving away spoilers, but this one just picks up right after Restore Me. This one mostly revolves around Juliet trying to figure out more about her past and where she came from because a lot of secrets come out that have you wondering, like, where did she come from? I just did not see the story taking the weird turn that it did in this. This one leaves off on the craziest cliffhanger and it honestly made me so upset because everything was kind of falling into place and the ending of this like totally crushed me but these were absolutely amazing reads in the month of May. I highly recommend the Shatter Me series if you haven't tried it out already. I love that series so much. I don't even know what I'm going to do when I finish it because I just don't want to leave that world yet. <laughs> Next up I read book three in the selection series which is the one by Kiara Cass. This kind of wraps up the main storyline in the selection series. If you're not familiar with it, it also takes place in a dystopian world. It's essentially like the bachelor meets dystopian world and royalty because the whole idea of it is that 35 girls are chosen to go to the castle and try to win the heart of the prince while also trying to stay safe from the rebellion that is trying to overtake the castle. This was just another really fun romance that also has a lot of action and adventure in it. The dystopian world aspect too is very fascinating to me. I've been really getting into those types of books lately. There's just something about them that I really love and I think it's because growing up dystopian worlds were so popular. I saw them a lot growing up when it came to the Hunger Games series, Divergent. I feel like it kind of reminds me a little bit of my childhood and I think that's why I like dystopian worlds so much. Anyways, getting off topic, this was four stars for me. Book two was actually three stars for me because I found the main character America to be very, very frustrating. There is a love triangle in this story between America, Aspen, and Maxon, and in book two, it's just a lot of going back and forth and there's a lot of miscommunication and it literally drove me crazy. I finished that book not liking America. But I have to say it's better. Like book two wasn't my favorite but I really really enjoyed book three. I wound up giving this a four star rating and it's mainly because like the last quarter of the book so much crazy stuff happens. The plot twist that happened in this book I just can't believe the author actually put in there. I feel like most authors wouldn't write those types of plot twists in these. It's so hard because again I can't spoil it for you guys but there's just some really crazy stuff that happens in this book that I'm very surprised about. Nonetheless I do like the way it ended up. I don't like the miscommunication in it. It kind of drove me crazy at times. America just she drives me crazy in general. The Selection is another really fun series to read. It's super fast paced and easy going. Next up I read The Mistake by L. Kennedy. This is book two in the Off Campus series. If you're not familiar with the Off Campus series which I feel like most people are. It's a very popular book talk series. The entire series though revolves around four hockey players, four friends. Book one was The Deal and that one revolves around Garrett Graham who is like a very popular book talk boyfriend. Everyone loves him. He's still one of my favorite book boyfriends today and I read that book like almost a year ago honestly. I love Garrett Graham here. So I decided to go back to Briar University and try out the mistake. This tells the story of John Logan and Grace. I have to say I went into this book with very high expectations because I loved The Deal so much. It's still one of my favorite books today. I didn't do it for me guys. This was one of my three star reads in the month of May. It was good. It was cute. But that's all there really was to it. I felt like it really lacked a good storyline. John and Grace knew each other for like five seconds and then they were together and then some crazy stuff happens that's then resolved within the next five seconds and that was like it. That's like the whole story. I hear the rest of the books in the series are absolutely amazing and worth it. Next up we have My Dark Romeo. This is by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. This cover is probably one of the prettiest covers I own. This is a dark romance, enemies to lovers, forced marriage, forced proximity, all that good stuff we like to read in books. This is another book I had very high hopes for, mainly because of the cover. The fact that it's called My Dark Romeo, referencing Romeo and Juliet. The vibes were just immaculate in my opinion. The opening page even has a quote from Romeo and Juliet. Look at the detail. It's just so gorgeous. This entire book, I was so blown away. I ended up giving this a three star rating. I did enjoy it. It just wasn't like my all time favorite. I found myself drifting off when I was reading this. It couldn't hold my attention and usually when a book can't hold my attention I know it's not going to be that good for me. The story revolves around Romeo and Dallas. Romeo basically ropes Dallas in to this forced marriage. He can't do anything about it. Like she has to marry him no matter what because of the circumstances they're under. Romeo is kind of using Dallas as a chess piece to get back at his rival but throughout the story we kind of see him and Dallas grow closer to one another. I think what kept this from
from being a higher star rating for me though is Dallas's character. I didn't like her character. Dallas was a very ditzy, stuck up. I hate the way that I'm describing her, but like that's the best way I could literally describe her character. Like she was just very ditzy throughout the entire story and very stuck up. And honestly, she kind of reminded me of a mean girl. So I didn't really like her character throughout it. I couldn't really connect with her or vibe with her. It was going to be a two star for me, but the last quarter of it kind of redeemed itself and I ended up liking the ending and how everything went. I did enjoy it, it just wasn't my favorite. Following that, I have another dark romance. We have Twisted by Emily McIntyre. This is a never after novel. She has the next one coming out, I believe in the fall time, and that one's going to be The Hunchback of Notre Dame reimagining. I'm really excited for that because I loved that movie growing up, so I feel like the book is going to be so fun and different. Emily McIntyre takes our favorite Disney movies, our favorite fairy tales. She turns them into dark reimaginings where they revolve around the villain. I have to say, going into the series, I did not have high hopes for it because I was like, there's no way I'm going to fall in love with the villains from my favorite fairy tales. The first book in the Never After series revolved around Hook from Peter Pan, and then book two revolved around Scar from The Lion King. Love those books so much. They were both five stars for me. I'm still constantly thinking about them. Book three was Wretched. That was a Wizard of Oz reimagining and that was not for me. I did not like that one. That was actually a two star reading for me. And then Twisted is an Aladdin reimagining and Aladdin was one of my favorite movies growing up so I was super excited to get into this. I have to say like the first half of the book I was really nervous. I did not think I was going to like it. I don't know what it was with Wretched and Twisted but the writing style just seemed a little bit different compared to the first two books in the series. There's also just a lot more graphic scenes that I just wasn't prepared for. And then after we reached the halfway mark, I was kind of like, oh, this is getting better. I, I can vibe with this. Like I mentioned, they're dark fairy tale reimaginings and they revolve around the villains in the story. So in Twisted, the main character Julian is based off of Jafar from Aladdin. And then Yasmin is based off of Jasmine. Yasmin's family runs a diamond business. They're like literally billionaires. And Julian works for the diamond business, but he wants to make sure he inherits it because he does all the work. So he ends up forcing Yasmin into a marriage with him. All this crazy stuff happens in between because Yasmin is in love with a servant boy who is based off of Aladdin. I say it anytime I review one of these books. I love the idea of these fairy tale reimaginings. They make you fall in love with these characters that you never thought you would ever fall in love with, that you never thought you would like. It was such a fun and different take on Aladdin and the whole story. I did end up giving it four stars. Next up, I read The Final Offer by Lauren Asher's final book in the Dreamland Billionaires series. Honestly, if I could, a million stars. This was my favorite book out of the entire series. It was so cute. Cal and Alana's story is just the sweetest story out of all of them, honestly. Cal is probably my favorite Kane brother. I just love them so much. I literally took a few days to process everything that happened in the story before I could pick up another book. I'm so upset that the series is like over now because I just want to live in this world. If you're not familiar with the Dreamland Billionaire series, it revolves around three brothers the Kane brothers, Rowan, Declan, and Cal. Book one revolves around Rowan, and I love that book so much because it gives off all the Disney vibe. Basically, the grandfather of these boys created this crazy empire. When he passes away, passes it down to the boys, but in his will, he has these tasks for the boys to complete before they can actually inherit their part from him. So book one revolves around Rowan, and his grandfather leaves him with the task to basically come up with a renovation plan for Dreamland. And then in book two, which is term and conditions, that one revolves around Declan. Declan's task from his grandfather is he has to get married and have a kid. In book three, Cal is given the task of going back to Lake Wisteria where the boys grew up and selling the old lake house that they all grew up in. I'm so surprised that it ended up being my favorite one because it's a second chance trope and it's a friends to lovers trope, which aren't usually my favorite tropes, but I think they're slowly becoming my favorite tropes because this book literally I can't stop thinking about it. It's my favorite book. I want to live in it. And when he goes back to this lake house to complete his grandfather's task, he finds that Alana, his old childhood best friend and lover, is living in the house. And the whole story kind of revolves around him trying to sell the house, but also trying to get Alana to agree to it. I love this book with all my heart. Lauren Asher is like one of my favorite authors. The characters and worlds that she has created are just some of my favorites. I decided to pick up Collided, which is book two in the Dirty 
Air series. This is also by Lauren Asher. I read book one, which was Throttled, I want to say two months ago, and I enjoyed that one. I think I gave it three or four stars because it was kind of on the lighter side for me. I felt like there was just something missing from it. I decided to pick up Kaleida, which is book two, and this tells the story of Sophie and Liam. I have to say, I love this so much more. Liam is another F1 driver. He doesn't drive with Noah. He drives for McCoy. And then Sophie is the daughter of the team president for the opposing team. During her summer vacation off of school, she goes to travel around with her dad to go to all the races. But Liam is kind of like a playboy and Sophie refuses to be like one of his conquests. So she makes him agree to only be friends with her and not try anything on her. And the entire story, it's so good. And honestly, the way the book starts is crazy. Like we get point of views from both Sophie and Liam. Sophie's intro to the story is very cute and innocent. She's like working a kid's birthday party, painting faces. And then we get to see Liam's intro to the story and it's a very dark and heartbreaking intro. And it sets up the rest of the story for Liam's character. You understand why Liam is the way he is. This was four stars for me. I absolutely loved it. I cannot wait to read book three and book four. Highly recommend Lauren Asher book. She's coming out with a new series too and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. This is also one of the books I annotated in the month of May and there's so many good book quotes I took from this. But that is all for my May wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. Make sure to comment down below what your favorite read of May was. If I had to pick out of this pile, it would probably be Final Offer by Lauren Asher. This was definitely my favorite book of the month. I'm still thinking about it. I don't think I'll ever get over that entire series. I definitely see myself rereading it this year because I loved it that much. With this being my May wrap up, you guys already know what's coming up next, which is my June TBR. I'm so excited because I have so many fun books that I want to read in the month of June. Probably too many books. I definitely see my TBR being a very ambitious one, but you know what? Who cares? Why not? It's summertime. We're gonna have fun with it. We have a ton of summer reads and beach reads. I'm really excited about it. Definitely stay tuned for my June TBR that will be up right after this one. Again, I am so happy with how May went. It was honestly a way better reading month than I thought it would be. I was kind of nervous in the beginning of the month that I wouldn't get through a lot of books because I kind of felt myself going into a reading slump. I definitely overcame that feeling and we had an incredible reading month. I'm so happy about it. I'm super proud of myself and here's to having another great reading month in the month of June. But I love you guys so, so much and I'll see you in my next video.